can have a praise party like that, he's brought you too far not to give God some glory right now. They are walking in authority. And you are walking in authority too. When I think about what our young people could be doing, what they, what the world tells them they could be doing, I just lose my mind when I see young people up here singing, dancing, giving God all that they have. You ought to just praise his name right now. You ought to just lift up the name of the Most High right now. Oh, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Glory to God right now. These were songs that the devil thought that they had. They were just baptized two Sundays ago. And they give God all that they have. And you've been saved all your life and you can just sit there. You ought to just give God a little bit of praise. Can you give, give God a little bit of praise right now? Walking in authority, just lift up your hands right now. Oh, bless his name. Oh, bless his name in this place. Amen, amen. Sister Jones, I can say this because you are the youth choir director and my wife. And you are doing an awesome job with our young people here in the church. Amen, amen. You make it hard for a young preacher to come behind all that jumping around and jumping all over stage. I got to come with it today, y'all, so y'all keep me in your prayer. <laughs> Amen, amen. Let us have a quick word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, how we thank you, Lord. Lord, how we glorify your holy name, Lord. Lord, how we exalt your holy name on today, Jesus. Lord, we can't thank you enough for this yet another opportunity to worship you on today, Lord. Lord, right now we ask that the Holy Spirit fill this place, Lord, and bless your preacher, Lord, as he delivers a word to your people today, O oh Lord. Lord, I ask that you just touch all under the sound of my voice on today. Those who may be in the building and those who may be online, Lord, just touch right now like only you can do, Lord. These and all blessings we ask in your darling son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 First of all, giving honor to God who has called me to give the, the, the awesome responsibility to preach to his people. I thank uh, Pastor Lowry on today for allowing me this opportunity to stand before you and deliver a word in his absence on today. I want to thank these preachers uh, who stuck around from 9 o'clock. Reverend Carter brought a word, if you missed that word. He brought a mighty word on this morning. Go back and watch the video. I hope this stays posted. But thank you, brothers. I appreciate you. I just want to say that I, my heart is full right now just to see how far God has brought this church family. You know, it, it's, you can go to some churches and the pastor can say that they won't be there and no one likes to show up. And I, to be honest with you, I didn't know what to expect on today. But I'm grateful to God for your obedience I'm grateful to God for your maturity. We have come from such a long way. It's not hardly an empty seat in here right now, and that's because of our relationship with God on today. But there is a word from the Lord. If you stay with me today, I need your amens. I need your encouragement. We're going to deliver the word from the Lord. A very familiar passage of scripture today coming from the book of Proverbs, the third chapter, 
verses 5 and 6. This is one of my favorite passages of scripture. But it's amazing. I was sharing with some of the ministers. Is I read this scripture all the time. But it's amazing how when God uses you and allows you to see the text in a different way. How you can deliver it in a way that's impactful to all of our lives. So let us read the word together. All together. One, two, three. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. And by the help of the Holy Spirit we'd like to use for our thought today, get on the right track. We, we could have just stopped at trust in the Lord. That says enough as it is. I can really give you that word and we can shout all day off of just trust in the Lord. But I want to reveal to you a, a few things from this scripture that I really hope encourages somebody, someone on today. It was a, a few years ago, actually seven, several years ago, I'm dating myself back when I was in college around 1997. And I was in school in, I am not that old, all right? I'm just as old as y'all are. <laughs> I was on my way home from college. I was in school in Louisiana. And before I left to go to school, my mom and my dad made sure I knew exactly where I was going. They made sure that I had my route all mapped out. And I came home pretty frequently in that first year of college. So I knew that way like the back of my hand. I knew it so well that I even found a few shortcuts that made the trip a little bit easier through some of those two lane highways through Louisiana and Mississippi. But one weekend, I brought a friend home with me. And they told me about a way that they thought was a little bit quicker than even I thought it was. They even tried to show it to me on a map. You know, this was before we had GPS, so there, there was no GPS back then. We had to use the map. We had to open it up and look at it. So what I did is I made a big mistake, and I took the way that my friend thought I should take. And one way or another, we wound up lost in Mississippi. And all us Arkansas people, I'm, I don't mean to offend anybody from Mississippi in here, but from Arkansas, we have a saying, we say, thank God for Mississippi. Because if thing, things can't get any worse, there's always Mississippi. <laughs> so I hope I'm not offending anybody on today. But I say that. And I love Mississippi, don't, and I love my Mississippi people. But what I, what, I, what I came upon in Mississippi, my Mississippi experience, was I wound up off track. And I wound up at a, a dead end. And it was a dead end, it was so bad, it looked like we had just stepped back in time. It looked like houses were sitting in a cul-de-sac, it looked like they didn't get the memo that the Civil War was even over and that the union won. Not only were we off track, but it was a major setback. It took me about two hours off course. It was getting dark outside. It just looked like my situation was getting worse and worse because I was lost in Mississippi. So I finally made the decision that I had to do something about my situation. So I went back the way I came until I came across something familiar that would help me get back on the right track. I started to see some of the signs that directed me to the right highway. I checked my road map to make sure I was passing through the right town, all those little towns on my way back. And after reflecting back 
on all the wrong turns and then making the right turns, I finally got back on track to get to my father's house. And isn't that where we find ourselves sometimes in life? We know the right way to do things. We may even be on the right track, but sometimes we find ourselves taking shortcuts, knowing that we are straying away from familiar territory. And sometimes we look up and we find ourselves way off track. Look at the person next to you and, and ask them, have you ever been off track? Have you ever been off track in school? Have you ever found yourself off track in relationships? Have you ever found yourself off track in your job? Have you ever found yourself off track in your finances? Have you ever found yourself off track in your marriage? Sometimes we find ourselves trapped in off-track situations simply because we don't want to face the fact that we got ourselves into that mess. We'll stay there as long as we can, blaming ourselves, blaming everyone else, excuse me, blaming everyone else for getting me in this situation except for the one who's responsible, and that would be me. The hardest part about being stuck in off-track situations is that the only way to get out, you have to first admit that you are lost before you seek help. But the good news today is that God always provides an exit strategy. And his exit strategy never fails, but you have to be willing to put yourself in a position to trust him in every situation. When it seems like you have nowhere else to go, he just wants you to acknowledge him. He just wants to know that you know that he is in control and he is able to see you through. But how do we find this transpire in scripture? Where do we see this in scripture? We see it in Proverbs third chapter in verse five. Brother, could you put verse five back up on the screen for me? Where the, it simply says, trust in the Lord. We see this direct and structured right here in scripture. But why do we find ourselves falling into dark places? Why do we still make so many wrong turns in life? Well, the truth of the matter is, is that you may have trust issues. It may be your life's experiences that have taught you that you can only trust in yourself. That's a dangerous place that life can put you in. Friends tell all your business, trust issues. Your family turns their back on you, trust issues. My mama wasn't there, trust issues. Daddy don't care, trust issues. My husband cheats on you, your husband cheats on you, Trust issues. Coworker stabs you in the back. Now I got trust issues. And all that a lack of trust is, is a lack of confidence. And when you don't have that confidence, that confidence is replaced by fear. You find yourself in a place where you can only trust one person, and that is yourself. And that makes you your own worst enemy. Have you ever heard that old song that some of the old saints used to sing? It's just Jesus and me. Now, I got to believe I'm not that smart. 
But I have to believe that, that God wouldn't put all of us on this earth if it was ever meant to be just Jesus and me. You might look around, it might just be you. And Jesus may not be anywhere in that situation because you haven't gone out to find him in your situation. Second Timothy also says in verse one through first chapter, verse seven, says that God has not given us, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. That sound mind is a key in that verse because these trust issues, when you replace them with fear, if you don't have a sound mind, your trust issues may be driving you crazy. People with trust issues are, are just not fun people to be around. Have you ever had people in your circle that can't trust you, that don't trust anything that you say, don't trust anybody else? They tend to second guess everything that you say to them. Well, I think the restaurant we're going to go to is over and forward. No, it's, it's, in, it's in Arlington. Well, I think that uh, we should go to this church. No, we should go to another church. I just don't trust those people over there. Don't replace your trust, hear me out, church, with insecurity, with fear, and with confusion. In spite of how things may look, trust in the Lord with all your heart. In every situation, trust in the Lord. When friends turn their back on you, trust in the Lord. When your mom and dad stop believing in you, trust in the Lord. If your husband ever cheats on you, it's not that hard. When your coworker stabs you in the back, when your kids stop acting right, trust in the Lord. When church folks start acting funny, trust in the Lord. So in the text, God gives us some clear direction. He says, trust in the Lord. Could you put verse 5 back up? Here we go. You own it today. But it goes on to say, and lean not onto your own understanding. So not only does God give us some direction, excuse me, some instruction, but God gives us some correction. Because sometimes it can be hard for us to see what trust really looks like. God knew that on this journey that there will be times when instructions would be tough to follow. So God not only offers us instruction, but he gives us correction. Verse 5 says, lean not into your own understanding. And I'm so glad today that I have a God that not only tells me what to do, but I have a God that tells me what not to do. Sometimes God has to look at you and tell you no. When I think about what leaning looks like, leaning requires you to shift your weight disproportionately. Whatever you lean on, you trust that it won't let you fall down. And when I think about what, what the Bible says at this point, come here, uh, Reverend, let me get three. Reverend Smith, Reverend Wilder, Reverend Carter. Let me stand right here. When I think about what the Bible says, it says, lean not into your own understanding. Have you ever tried to lean on yourself? You can't do it. No matter how much I lean to this side, I'm going to fall. No matter how much I lean on this side, I'm going to fall. I can lean forward, I can lean back, I am going to fall. That's why the Bible says lean not into your own understanding. I was upstairs one day in children's church and I observed them playing a game I had never seen before. It blew my mind. 
It was called a trust fall. For all the young people, y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. The trust fall, you just go to somebody, you say trust fall, and you start falling, and they have to catch you. And you have to trust that they're going to catch you. Now, it's an amazing thing when you put all your trust in somebody that they will catch you because there's a chance that they might be distracted and might not see you falling. But I'm grateful today that I don't have to lean on myself to keep me from falling because I know that I have a father who watches over me. I know that he has a son named Jesus that protects me. I know that I have a comforter in the Holy Spirit so that if I ever find myself in a dark place, in a dark situation, I can fall and they keep me from falling. And not only do they keep me from falling, but I can release it all to them and just let them have it. And just say, thank you for keeping me right now. Thank you for not leading me into my own understanding. I trust you right now in everything that I have. I trust you in all my dark places. I thank you, Lord, for protecting me right now and keeping me from falling on my head. Thank you, brothers. Sometimes you just have to trust the Lord in all your situations. If you try to lean on yourself, you just always, always end up falling down. But I'm glad that I have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit to save me from myself. Hallelujah. All oh, has blessed me. Oh, I'm, I'm grateful for God's instruction, for the fact that he can correct me, give me that correction. But I'm grateful that sometimes God provides not only the direction, not only the correction, but he also provides me with the protection. Put verse 6 back on the screen where it says, In all your ways, acknowledge him. God knows that on this road, we need protection from Satan. Because God knows that Satan is so slick. God knows that Satan is out there to trip you up. Just when you think that you, everything is going well, Satan is there to knock you down off your high horse. Just when you've decided to lean on the Lord, Satan tells you you don't need to lean on the Lord. He's out there. We think that we can see the devil. We think about a guy in red suit, pointy ears and horns. That's not how the devil shows up. He shows up in the form of your friends. He shows up in the form of your confidence. Sometimes we, that confidence shows up and it convinces us that we are in control of our circumstances that we are in control of our lives. If he can convince you of that, then he has gained control of your trust. God cannot access what is not in his possession. He cannot touch you when the devil has convinced you to acknowledge yourself before you have acknowledged him. But we know that the devil can't touch what God has placed his hands on. Be mindful of God's protection in this scripture. The devil attacks you daily to make you believe that you're in control of your life. Am I helping somebody right now? Be careful to acknowledge God in everything that you do. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But we know a man named Jesus who came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. The Bible says to just cast all your cares on him. Give God credit in all your situations where credit is due. So God gives us his protection, but right there, you, if you don't, if, this is the part that I nearly shouted off of. 
I did shout off this part. I ain't gonna lie. When you look at verse six, the word that really stands out again in this scripture is the word all. All your ways acknowledge him. God wants to bless you in all your ways, but you need to examine all areas of your life. The question today is, my brothers and sisters, is do you trust him in all your areas of life? Sometimes we can trust God to be the provider, to be our protector, but do we trust him in everything in our lives? Oh, this one might hurt y'all because this blessed me, y'all. It convicted me when I, when I thought about this. We have to be careful not to become our own worst enemy in some of the things that we were taught growing up. We have to be careful not to look at every single example that was given to us growing up that was not fr taught from the Bible. Just because mama did it, don't make it right. Just because your daddy did it, you saw your daddy doing it, it don't make it right. Just because your friends are out there doing it, it doesn't make it right. So we have to reflect on ourselves and do a reflection check on, on everything in our lives. Sometimes we believe in something just because society says it's okay. How many of y'all know that everything you see on social media and mainstream media is not a reflection of what your life should look like? If you try to mimic everything you see on love and hip hop, if you try to mimic everything you see on world star, on world star hip hop video, the, the ratchet YouTube is what they call it. <laughs> My young people are in the building today so they know exactly what I'm talking about. If you try to mimic everything you see on Instagram, everything you see on Facebook, you might not make it y'all. Your life, you don't want your life to be a reflection of those things. Think about it. What, what's the hot thing right now is getting into fights and then recording it. That's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. You just provided the police all the evidence they need to lock you up. We try to look at other circumstances and apply them to our own situations. And sometimes we find ourselves going through a cycle of mistakes in life because we do not seek the Lord in all of our situations. And if you had to put a finger on it, you could even say that there are some generational curses because there is a lack of acknowledgement of the Lord working in your life. Some of us trust him to provide our needs, but do you trust him enough Pay attention to this. Come in real close. Do you trust him enough to guide you in your decisions? Is that your prayer? Do you trust him enough to break those addictions that you have? Those addictions that not everyone may know about. Those bad habits that you might have. Do you trust him in those situations? Do you trust him to undo all of the wrong beliefs and things that you may have. A real reflection requires us to examine ourselves to make sure that we acknowledge him in all of our ways and lean not into our own understanding. Where does understanding begin? Where does understanding begin? All wisdom comes from the Lord. All wisdom comes from this book. Everything that you think may be right, go confirm it. Everything that you need to know is in there. 
Everything that you want to know about life, by any situation, it's in the book. You having problems at home? It's in the book. You can't get right with your finances? It's in the book. You can't raise your family? Your, your family just is going every which way? It's right here in the book, y'all. So stop leaning so hard on everything that you were taught and seek wisdom. Acknowledge, acknowledge, the word acknowledge in the scripture can also be translated as submit. Start allowing God to control your situations and your circumstances, no matter how bad they are. Allow him, submit to him your, the control of your situations before they spiral out of control. It takes real spiritual maturity to pray a prayer that says, God, I am not in control, and I need you right now to come and take control of my situation. I acknowledge you in all my ways. Lord, I thank you for your direction. I thank you for your correction. I thank you, Lord, for your protection. I thank you, Lord, for that reflection, Lord. And we know that when we cast all our cares on him and just give it all to him, that faith is what we're putting in practice. Our faith in God is not a passive faith because we know that all things are working on our behalf. The outcome is always a good outcome when God is involved. What a God we serve that offers us such great instruction. What a God we serve that gives us correction when we go astray. What a God we serve that provides protection along the way. He allows us the time to reflect, gives us reflection to address the areas where we may not be acknowledging him. But if you look at the end of verse 6, and this is your shout cue, don't miss it. When we get all that right, he shall direct our paths. And I'm most grateful today for his direction. In spite of how bad I may mess up my situation and get off track, he picks me up, he turns me around, he lets me know that I am never alone on this journey because his hand is on me. If I can just step out of the way and let God take me the rest of the way, there's a promise that God gives us. If I can just acknowledge him, then I can give him my situations that if I can just turn over my circumstances and cast all my cares on him, he is able to keep me from falling. He's able to work it out for my good. He's able. I'll never be lost. Again, somebody help me here. He's able to break every addiction. He's able. My bad habits have been set free. He's able. Oh, I'm getting out of my own way because he's able to set me free. I give it all to you on today, Lord. I acknowledge you in all my ways. And you are directing my path. I surrender all, all to Jesus. I surrender all to him. I freely give. I will ever, I will ever love and trust him. I trust you, Lord. I love you, Lord, because my life, my life, 
I give it all to you. And that's somebody's testimony in here today. Have you given your all to Jesus? Have you trusted him with every circumstance? Have you trusted him with your family? Have you trusted him with your finances? Have you trusted him in everything that you do? I trust you, Lord, and my life is in your hands. I'll never be the same. God will make a way for you. Even though I get lost sometimes, God will direct my path. Even though I have to cry sometimes, God will direct my path. In spite of it all, he looked beyond my faults. He saw my needs. God love, it kept me. He kept me. He kept me. I trust you, Lord. 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 Does anybody out there trust him? Does anybody out there trust him? Does anybody out there trust him? I trust you, Lord. Your grace and your mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I trust you, Lord. I'm getting my life back on the right track. I trust you, Lord. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you believe it? Shout yeah. If you believe it, say yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. I don't know what you've been going through, but I know my testimony. And I give it all to you right now. I trust you with it, Lord. I can't do anything with it. Lord, I just give it to you. I have no power. You have all power. I thank you, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. I bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I trust you. Woo! I tried it for myself, y'all. And I'm a living witness right now that if you just put it all in God's hands, he will set you back on the right path and he will not let you down. I trust you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout yeah. Shout yeah. Whoa.
feel all right. I feel all right. The doors of the church are open. But right now, there may be someone who's sitting in these pews who been doing it your way all your life. You've been trying it this way and that way. And what an awesome move of God. I pray that something was said in this service that will help you in this season of your life. The first thing I want to do is offer Christ to you. First, all you have to do is simple is ABC. Ask, ask God to enter your heart. Believe with all of your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is your Lord and personal Savior and you shall be saved. And then listen, if you don't have a church home, we welcome you to become a member of the Greater Friendship Church where we are building families by growing people. If you want to become an e-member, all you have to do is go to our website, greaterfriendshipmbc.com. We are so grateful that you have shared in this amazing experience with us. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.